Hello and welcome to episode 24 of The Misanthropod. I'm Snap and I'm joined by Wibbs. Say hello. Hello. And I'm joined by Drama. Say salut. Salut. What are you doing here? I'm on your couch again. I know. <laughs> I missed it so much. <laughs> <laughs> Little piece of home. Well, you can take a cushion with you if you like. The one with my butt impr- imprint on. Uh. The perfect fucking imprint of your, your, your butt, yeah. Yeah, what the fuck are you doing back in the country? Um, I came back to mostly to pick up my computer. Uh, I'm glad to see you've got your priorities in order. <laughs> and I guess see, you know, family and friends and things. Secondary objectives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> the people are secondary. <laughs> the computer is first. <laughs> oh, and get lots of tea. And pick up lots of tea. And brown sauce. I didn't realise how much I missed brown sauce. I honestly can't remember the last time I had oh, brown sauce. Apparently I love it. I got into a, <laughs> on the way back, I went to Weatherspoons for breakfast. Um, which is a pub, if you're not a British. It's like a chain of pubs. And they do good breakfasts for like £4 or something. And I had brown sauce with it. And I honestly got through like at least a quarter of a two, of like a bottle of the stuff. I was just like, brown sauce everywhere. And I was like, oh, I guess I missed this stuff. <laughs> oh my God, dude. In like in like five, ten years, you are going to be an urban legend of Weatherspoons. So like, oh yes, the great bearded French hedge. <laughs> He came in and drank like a full bottle of brown sauce, never to be seen again. I hear yeah. he still haunts the motorways, guzzling their brown sauce. I think they did think I was weird because when they came over to check how a breakfast was, I was like, "Oh, we, 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 try to be a messy." I mean, thank, I mean, g- thank you, good. <laughs> so I'm so used to all, that, trying, yeah. to be, trying to force myself to respond in French and things. <laughs> In France, when I got back, I was still in the habit of it. I was like, oh, they, give, they think I'm weird now. It's, oh. it's like the thing of if you uh, if you work at a call centre and it becomes really hard not to answer your own phone <laughs> with the greeting you have to say. Oh, like, yeah. for a long time, because um, I used to work for um, at Seven Trent Water, which is the, the water authority around here. Um, and I was like, yeah, yes, I'll, uh, I'd answer my own phone with, like, Seven Trent Water. How may I assist with your inquiry? It's like <laughs> your mum's on the phone, like, um, what? Yeah. She's like, oh, no, finally, it's... I've gotten through. <laughs> oh, it's been yeah. days. Actually, shit, I forgot the exact greeting. I'm I so... know what it is because you fucking answer the phone to me like, "Hello, welcome to Seven Trent Water. May I please confirm the nature of your inquiry?" Oh, that's the one. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. fucking know it off by heart. I didn't even work there. I, I, I spent. I, I, I had to scrub that from my mind, so I guess, I guess I have forgotten it now. You fucking just... surgically implanted that memory into my mind, you asshole. <laughs> so I don't need this anymore. You could have this. <laughs> that's what marriage is. It's sharing your weird dysfunctions. <laughs> The one that messes with you way more is if you go to work from one call centre into another one. Ooh. And then for about a week, you have you're, you will constantly be tripping yourself up saying the greeting from the previous one into the next one. That fucks with you. Welcome to Seven Trent Water. You kill him, we grill him. Wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> you, what call centre have you worked at? I worked at a takeaway for a little while. I'm not saying which one because apparently they like they like people who phoned in would kill things and then we grill them. And that's a Simpsons reference. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, that we, would be and horrific. We, and we were worried about what to talk about. <laughs> oh, I'm sure the listeners at home are just they're, they're adoring this this enriched conversation between three three chums. Oh dear! It's the important brown sauce discussion <laughs> uh, with with a side order of call centre minutia and brown sauce. Of course. Which, that's the second helping of brown sauce, which I guess does play into what Matt was doing. Yeah, I had more than two helpings, so <laughs> I went back a few days later. I'm not proud. <laughs> were you allowed back? <laughs> you know that you... Oh, to a different one, that's the joy of weather. Oh There's God. so many different ones. You sound like an addict. <laughs> you you know... sound like, it's like, oh yeah, I went to, like, I've been banned from this casino, so I went to a different one. <laughs> you know you can just buy brown sauce, right? You don't have to order a breakfast yeah. and make but the What would I do if I had found myself in possession of a whole bottle in private? But I don't <laughs> want to know. Wait, see, at least I know myself if I go somewhere in public. <laughs> It won't be too bad. Are you using those people as your fucking, like, (laughs) impulse control? Because speaking as a former waitress, that is way above our pay grade. (laughs) Like, go in, like, start smearing brown sauce at your armpits going, save me from myself. (laughs) Jesus Christ. I'm not the fucking 
Alex here. I'm, we just want to help you. Okay. <laughs> the first stage is admitting it. And I'm not admitting there's a problem. I'm just admitting I do it. <laughs> But it is a problem. It's not a problem. You're at go- all. Okay, you, you're literally you're gonna like you're gonna run out of weather spoons to this, and you're gonna go back with like a, a fake mustache over your actual beard. And like, hello, my name is Blomerblatch, and I'd like to inspect your brown sauce, please. I'm the brown sauce inspector. The, the, the fake mustache will just be painted on in brown sauce. <laughs> Apparently not trying to lick it off while talking. <laughs> like they look back, like they look down, they look back up, and they see you. It's all gone off your face. You're just like, <laughs> I had a shave. Then you start putting it in the, like the web of your thumb and forefinger and snorting it. <laughs> uh, I don't have a problem. It's fine. I can stop whenever I want. <laughs> I just don't want to. <laughs> That's why you're back in the UK. <laughs> Fucking <That's> rehab. The- <laughs> uh. The fuck are we supposed to be talking about? I think Video Skype. Games. I think Skype like filters out this much, but we're actually get together. <laughs> it goes a bit wrong. <laughs> we we need the Skype to keep us on topic. Like oh fuck! And I've just remembered some of the bullshit like tangents we have gone on. So yeah, I don't think Skype is helping that much. No, uh, no. no. Uh, yes. So shall we get? Yes, let's get going to a subject that we're supposed to be talking about. All I can think of is brown sauce larceny. <laughs> but in non-brown sauce related news... Yeah, we, we haven't really been up to much, and everything we've been doing is pretty much together. Which is... That sounds really bad, actually. <laughs> we haven't been aiding Drama Matt in his brown sauce capades. But we did play D&D with him. We, we did. did play, yeah. Like, first... Uh, first you're, you're DMing. Yeah, which I, have, which I haven't fun. done before. So I was genuinely, like, usually if I come to see you guys and see, when I come to see you guys and especially see Ash and Sarah and things, I'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going over there today. But then yesterday or whenever it was, um, I was genuinely a little tiny bit nervous coming to see you all. <laughs> I was like, this is a weird feeling. What's happening? <laughs> what about DMing? Um, yeah, just because I had I'd never done it before. Well, I, play, I played before mm. and I played 5th edition, which is what we played the other day. And none of you guys have played 5th edition before. No. So I was like, well, it makes sense if I DM it, because uh, I know the rules, and I've not done the story bit before, but at least I know a lot of the rules, and I can help you make your characters, and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I was a little bit... Well, mainly because I know you guys. I know you, I knew for well you were going to go off on a tangent. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> so I was like, I can prepare for this, but I mean, you're going to do something ridiculous at some point. Okay, so. that's, that is unfair. What happened? Was <laughs> it something ridiculous? I was acting fully within character. <laughs> that was what my character would have done. Are you really going to like penalise me for good role playing? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. That's, that's, that's I try not to as well. So <laughs> thank you for trying. I, I like to think that you you got away with some things that maybe in f- future adventures you may or may not get away with. But <laughs> to be fair, I was convinced I was going to die horribly. So we should probably explain what yeah. what it was I did. Oh, very good DMing, by the way, yeah, sir. Thank oh, you. It was, it's very good. Please don't kill me next time I try something <laughs> stupid. <laughs> so yeah. our first adventure was quite short because we had the whole evening, but then going through characters always takes longer than you expect, especially when you've only got one copy of the handbook between the four players and none of them have, made, have, have done it before. So it's always going to take a little bit, bit longer. So we didn't have. We only had like an hour to actually play. Mm. By the time we actually got to the adventure, so I had to cut a few bits out and things. So it's basically just two fights: go and fight these two we, dudes, and then go into a cave and find their boss. In we essence. did. We did end up playing for like two hours because it was. A, you were like, it was. It was like around. I think it was just before ten we started. <clears throat> that was about half ten by the time we started playing. Yeah, we we finished at about quarter past midnight. Okay, so it was about, okay, about two hours. Well, that's because it was only meant to be a couple of fights, but. We started in the pub because I was like, first one, they don't know their backstories or anything, so we'll have a first session, and then after the first session, you guys can have a think of backstories, and then we'll, we'll start working those into it next. But I was like, well, if we start making characters and then spending ages thinking about backstories, we're, never, we're not going to yeah. get a chance to play at yeah, all. Yeah. So I was like, okay, we'll start fairly generic, we'll start in a pub, someone will come in who needs help, and you go and help him, fine. But you spent the first half an hour just sitting in the pub, just messing about, and okay. Ash was pickpocketing people, and you. Were, yeah. I was I was drunk. My character <laughs> you was got drunk. was drunk. Well, he he was drunk before the fucking rest of them got there because he's just a fucking loser, <laughs> and like you're punk rock bard because yeah well, he's not a bard. Well, no, no, he's 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 <sighs> he's an entertainer. He's an entertainer. Yeah, we should probably uh, mention the characters that we've created. Yeah, that's why I was, I was yep. kind of co- trying to naturally yeah. coax you into doing that. Yeah. That was great, thank you. No one will ever fucking notice now. So tell us about your fucking guy. Yeah, so I, I originally wanted to make a bard, 
Um, but the group we were in, no one was playing like a, a straight up like melee character, tanky type person. like a ta- yeah. a, basically we had no one to tank. Yeah, you, we would have had three spellcasters and a rogue. Which and, yeah, rogue tank. Which, well, you've, tank you've done that in is well. fine, but. Yeah, he would lose a lot of his good abilities if he's just fighting someone by himself. Yeah. And it, it would be doable. And I take it into account where you go on, but you lovely enough decided to actually go on. I'll do something slightly different. I'll take the hit for the team. So, yeah, I, what I originally wanted... Repeatedly. Was, well, yeah. <laughs> That's the kind of the point. <laughs> what I originally wanted to do was to make a punk rock bard who was the dwarf, um, who is known by the name of Johnny because no, no one who's a non-dwarf can pronounce his real name. Um, which maybe one day I'll actually think of one, but yeah. Well, if you ever meet another dwarf, <laughs> hey, go- I just say, "Oh, his accent's really weird." Uh, <laughs> oh, you mountain dwarves, you're always weird. No, <laughs> aren't you a mountain dwarf? No, <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> what is this only character sheet? Shut up. <laughs> oh, yeah. you, you, oh, you were mountain. Okay, I meant the one that you weren't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, because we didn't have any other thing, I went barbarian and um, I, and. For a lark, may try and take um, like multi-class him into a bard later on <laughs> to make a barbarian. And before everyone who's played the game rages, that's really inefficient and horrible. Shut up. We know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We no. are <laughs> <don't worry. laughs> We just don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's fairly safe to say that no one who's playing is making a min-maxed ridiculous character. No, <laughs> no, no. So. Yeah, we're all being ridiculous yeah. assholes about it. But as a, um, it might not, it might not multi-class him into a bard. I guess it depends on how much I enjoy yeah. playing barbarian. Yeah. But he's still kind of a barbarian because I made him an entertainer. Uh, which meant that I got to do the most unrealistic thing that we did, uh, which is that I that we we went to a bar at the at the very start. I played a gig and got paid for it <laughs> twice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're welcome. By the way, <laughs> yeah, I went and put a thing on Twitter of like, yeah, we just got back from D and D. You know, my entertainer character got got paid well for a gig. My emotion is completely broken. <laughs> it's like, yeah, <laughs> it's like that's not how gigs work. <laughs> But no, now I've, now I. I mean, set- everyone there was very drunk. Yeah, including my character. Because that's the thing. Because I, the funny thing is, I wanted to make it so that my character was really, really bad at at, at being an entertainer. But the problem is, is that to to if to have the option to eventually make him into a bard, I have to take enough things in charisma. Yeah. So that actually he ends up being quite a good entertainer. So. And he's got like because he's because he has the entertainer background to make everything make sense. Mm. He has to be good at performance. It's that or you're so bad, everyone pitied you. Yeah, maybe you, you could do it like that. Or you roll, you rolled well for your performance check, but it could be to be you know you're putting on a good performance of someone who needs to be pitied. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or maybe but you were so bad, you were fucking <laughs> thoroughly entertaining. Or maybe I'm basically just the Ramones where. <laughs> I'm basically crap, but no one really minds, and they're still entertained. Yeah, yeah, yeah that could be it. <laughs> Which I don't know if I brought this up in in the podcast that happened around. I oh, know shit. Actually, this was when we, when we did this. It was before the podcast. Uh, we started recording them. Um, when ages ago we played with a Ramones cover band at a festival. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and well, actually, there was a, I think it was quite a few. There was a couple of Ramones cover bands. I think. Yeah, it usually. Is. I remember the ones with bad wigs. Yeah, um, <laughs> but you have to. When it comes to Ramones cover bands, you have to answer answer an interesting question. If a Ramones cover band is bad, does that make them a good Ramones cover band or a bad Ramones <laughs> cover band? I remember standing backstage watching them going, just puzzling this conundrum, like, seriously. Because <laughs> it's, it's definitely possible to be too good. Yeah. 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 And having seen live, live performances of the Ramones, I don't think it's possible to be too bad. <laughs> so it's an interesting question. But anyway. So yeah, I've, I've made this this thing that might one day become a become a, uh, a, a barbarian. But so he's currently just a barbarian who just happens to be kind of a bit of a punk. Because uh, I thought that would be fun, which means whenever I, p- I play a song, I've got to try and think up on the fly a bunch of bad jokes based on old songs. Oh, what was the one you played? Uh, I fought the watch and the watch won. That was the one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah that was, you did that the first time and now, yeah, we're expecting it every yeah. time. Yeah, you, you've really shot yourself yeah. in the foot there. So I've got. To, I'm, uh, I'll probably just sit down one night and just write up a bunch of them. So I've got them like like stored in my head ready. <laughs> you do have a freebie at some point because of our old band song oh, yeah. Initiative, which you can yeah. do once, yeah. <laughs> which yeah. is a, a bit a little bit meta, but <laughs> I'll bit. allow it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but yeah, so um, yeah, that's that's my character. What what is your character, Snipe? Well, my character is a warlock called Nathan, who's a shit bitch. <laughs> that is an accurate description yeah, of his character. Yeah, he's he's. Because uh, uh, warlocks have charisma-based casting, like their, their spells for some reason takes from charisma, so I've just dumped loads into. Oh, charisma. It's because you got to flirt with demons. Yeah, but hey, a succubus, huh? I'll suck your boss. Uh, what? <laughs> Get the fuck away from my boss! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was so fucking stupid. I was like, I thought about it, then I was like, my, I could feel pizza, pieces of my brain dying. <laughs> At least it's not arms. <laughs> what? Or <Or> moths. <laughs> okay. okay, so Nathan the Warlock, who is like super ashamed that he's a warlock, because I love self-hating characters. Yeah, I mean that's it's that's a fairly yeah. legit thing for a warlock. To yeah, so he's he's uh, like yeah. I mean he he'd rather he uses his powers rather than anyone else. But the main part of his character is that he's a little shit. So he'll he's he's a chancer. He'll always try like after after Matt's character Johnny played a gig, he stood up and was like, "I'm his manager. Everyone, I know you enjoyed that. If you, I'm gonna I'm gonna send a, a handkerchief round. Everyone put some coin in it. We'll get him to play again. And I managed to pull that off. And then we we made a couple of gold pieces out of it. Yeah, because I'm a shit. So yeah, he's he's there just being, I think mainly the annoyance of drummer Matt. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, what's it? So, like, we're all. It's like, because I want to. I don't want to say no to you because the first rule of DMing is, in essence, if you want to try something, like, yeah, okay, you can try it. I, well, am I and pushing the boundaries? This and the other time you did it, I was like, well, I'm not going to have it too difficult, like difficulty class that you need to be to do it for the first one because I don't want it to go completely off the rails and struggle for the first one where no one knows what they're doing. So I was like, I won't say it too hard, but I said it relatively hard. And then you just rolled ridiculously well each time you tried to do something like this. Did yeah. you roll a couple of natural 20s in yeah. there? Yeah, well, it was a yeah, natural yeah. 20 for that, actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think. And then it was like a 16 or 17 year old plus your yeah. bonuses for the next time. So I was like, Critical oh, okay. success. I was, <laughs> I was so aggressively charismatic. So yeah, in the story, guy comes in, we all rush to him. Um, like, Ash, who's the rogue, he he just starts fucking around and pickpocketing people. And our, our uh, wizard, she's sat there reading a book. Because she's, she's a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Wizards read books. Yeah. Uh, overturn cut. Like we need to go help out a guy. So we go over there. and We're like, <sighs> we try and um, like we see sort of a couple of guys in an over- overturned cart because um, the carts. What was it? It was transporting like a an artifact belonging yeah, to a local the, yeah. the wizard. Yeah. So yeah, we needed to. It may or may not be relevant to the story. <laughs> it may or not be. We, we just don't know. May or may not start having exclamation marks above his head. <laughs> <laughs> So we, we offer to help out because, you know, this this guy's, like, well-liked, well-known. He'll probably have a lot of money, so fuck it. Yeah, let's go. Ash does the cool roguey thing, gets behind one of the guys, shanks him, and he basically melts. <laughs> he just fucking is vaporized where he stands because he hits him so fucking I think he hard. stamps him right in the soul. Yeah, and then he <laughs> just kind of pops out of existence. What I liked most about the first encounter was that I spent the entire thing <laughs> running at the enemy, <laughs> throwing hand axes at them, missing. <laughs> Nearly, fu- like, just whizzing past our rogue's head, like, whoa, dude. <laughs> and then and then the guy dies before I even get to him. I'm like, I am the worst tank. I don't even get there. Yeah. Well, it's like, you've got, because you've got little legs, so it's like, you've got five yards off your speed. So you're like, by the time you get there, it's just, that guy's been vaporised, because, like, because <laughs> Ash critted that guy's soul. And then the other guy's just that, mush- He didn't even roll to quit, that was just it was yeah, just, just super murder. Yeah. So then we find a path and we go to the cave where they like all the other guys have gone to. And then I enter and oh my god, you enter and you botch. <laughs> I tried to give you you're like you're like I go to the cave. I was like, okay, well, do you you're just walking straight into the cave. And, you're like, and what did you say to that? I, I think I said I'm going balls deep into the cave. <laughs> the <laughs> thing was, we were low on time, and I was like, I'm just gonna get this moving. I know, like, I was like, I know that this is probably a bad idea. Okay, but I so need to get this moving. Explain to the the lovely listeners. What happened from <clears throat> going balls deep into that cave? Well, I was asked to roll um, 
I can't remember what chair was it a perception or a dexterity? No, it's dex because yeah, you basically you walk you went balls deep into a really quite obvious twit wire. Yeah, <laughs> and I rolled a one, <laughs> uh, so I got darted in fell the neck. into the path of where the dart would come <laughs> pretty much. And lost like half my health straight off the bat. You see, we were joking at the table, go because like our rogue runs up and is like, I go see and like, it's like, 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 yeah, check check her dexterity, trips it, you get another dart in the neck. <laughs> Just keep getting darts in the neck. But no, that probably would have killed your guy outright. No, another dart in the neck probably would have killed me. Yeah, so probably. that's probably not a good thing. So, so that was just to show you that traps exist, yeah. and then you rolled really badly. Yeah. <laughs> so I go up and I, I I tie I tie some of my clothes around your throat. So you know you've torn a my head. I torn a key your head <laughs> because my my guys like my warlock's an ex soldier. So he's like I've I've seen how this kind of works. <laughs> so you, you cut off the blood circulation, you probably won't die. So he basically tries to hang you. <laughs> And then we proceed further into the cave. So, okay, so after the after this, they've all gone in the cave. There's nothing else. It's a fairly linear cave because mostly because of time restraints. <laughs> <laughs> get to a big um, yeah. There's a few bits and bobs I had to cut out. Blah blah blah. But get end up getting into the a big opening, of which there's one. There's two more, like th- like guardy type dudes, same as before, and then one big leader, head, like thug, dude. Boss um, character. Boss yeah, character. The boss dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the idea was, okay, the first fight was fair, it was, you, you, when you're working out encounters, they so work out how much XP you're worth, and you have to work out theirs, and it was it was a well below easy yeah. for the first one. Yeah. Yeah. This one encounter. was meant to be, like, a relatively, just above me, like, you know, a rel- not super hard, but, you know, if, it wouldn't be entirely surprising if one of you was, like, you know... Knocked out. Knocked out or whatever, and then it wouldn't you wouldn't have died, but... Probably. <laughs> Unless you were rolling really bad. Yeah, like, so it was meant to be just a bit harder just to sort of show that, okay, well, fights can be difficult. Is, yeah. This was thrown... <laughs> it was derailed somewhat. <laughs> somewhat derailed. By another good roll from you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So my guy, I, I want him to be very bluff heavy for roleplay because I, I like roleplay. So, oh, what do I do? I... You took paper and a, a quill. quill. I t- from, from our wizard, Sarah. I took... Um, I took a bit of parchment and a paper. And I fucking... A bit of parchment and a paper. A bit... <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> All these weird old time words. It confuses my, my poor brain. I take a bit of parchment and one of her quills. I'm like, hey, can I borrow that? And she's like, um, I'm... Uh, she's so confused at me. She's like, <laughs> can you even yes? write? <laughs> yeah, she did ask me. She's like, can you even write? I'm like, fuck you. Give me your fucking stuff. So as I, I snatch the paper and the quill from her, and I storm into the cave, shouting my fucking ass off. I am outraged. I am so angry. I'm like, I can't believe this two-bit fucking organization. I Seriously, is this your first job? The guys in the cave, from I presume, are kind of startled by my yeah, outburst. Yeah, a little bit. So I, I'm, I'm picking them apart. I'm shouting at them. I'm scribbling furiously onto my parchment, going... Wait until the Lord... Like, what was his name? Can't... I don't know. Like, l- Lord Bad Guy is going to be so mad at you guys. A cave? Who shacks up in a cave? Seriously, gentlemen. What the hell? Meanwhile, I don't know what you guys... I think you guys are just kind of watching on in horror, waiting <laughs> okay. for me to fucking get we, shot and killed. Well, whilst you were distracting them by bullshitting at them, <laughs> I think we were all kind of trying to manoeuvre around the cave to better positions. Mm. I still remember the look you gave me. I was like, so I snatch that and I storm out there into the middle of the cave, shouting abuse at them. And the look you were like, right. I was like, well, I, I don't really want to murderize you <laughs> in the, the first relatively real actual fight you have to get into. Honestly, I was like, there is a very high probability that I'm just going to get yeah, fucking axed to the face. If you do it in future, you may or may not just get axed to the face. You're gonna <laughs> but fu- I was like, well, you're no, gonna I'll, be, it so I I'll, I'll be. Well, no, 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 but you probably, if, you probably would just straight up, if they just went. This is bullshit. Attacking you. Well, I I rolled very well. You're a bit squishy. I am. I am. But I I managed to roll well, and I convinced well, the you guy. Con- yeah, you convinced them that you were legit and working for this. You convinced them that this guy, this made up name, was the boss of their boss. Yeah. And I was like, so yeah, like, what are you doing here? You need like, there's another like uh, cart. To there's, knock yeah, over. there's another cart you need to knock over. You're gonna be late. 
you need to leave because you know there's like behind the guys there's like piles of loot that they've obviously like taken back and hoarded and i'm thinking the item that the uh the big maybe important guy is back there so i'm I, i'm trying to get them out of the cave i'm like oh my you need to hurry <laughs> yeah. oh my god like do you, do you have any idea what he does to people who piss him off and they're like uh no I'm like, it's it's bad what what he does <laughs> It's really bad, and I fucked that up. And like the main guys, kind of. Well, like, you didn't. You rolled. You rolled alarmingly well on the de- deception to make it there, so they think that you are yeah. who you say you are. And then you rolled pretty well, but okay. I, it, was, it was. It would have been ludicrously difficult to persuade them all to just leave. Yeah. So and you rolled pretty well, but not quite mm. as well as before. Yeah. So like, I kind of, I kind of didn't do as well as as I'd hoped. And so he was like, you know, I'm not leaving this. I have my orders. I'll send like the rest of the guys in the cave out. But I'm staying here, and I'm like, I, I don't really want to push my luck at this point. So I'm like, fine. I get, and I'm like, sorry, I've had a bad day. Yeah, I'm gonna put in a good word for you with this guy because I'm like, I'm panicking because now I'm like, I roll, I didn't roll perfect. Shit. What if I get? What if I roll a one? And you are a very squishy warlock standing yeah. next to a boss character with the rest of us standing at least like twenty feet away. Yeah, and like you guys are just things. like oh, more than that, more, for, far enough away that. You wouldn't get to it very quickly. No, I would have been fucking murdered. So he managed, like, you guys managed to hide just in time for the the grunts to run out to random bullshit location. And then I'm like, so, okay, I appreciate that. I respect that. You're a hardworking man. Could I see the thing that my lord wants? And I'm sitting there going, this is not going to fucking, this is so obvious. I'm like, that was good. Um, would you please like help me position my knife on the floor and see how hard it is to trip and fall on it? Could you, ha- could you have a, 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 a poke your head inside this cannon? I think I smell gold. <laughs> I think that's gunpowder. No, it's definitely gold. Definitely gold. But you know, the expensive kind. You should look. <laughs> Shit, I'm just real. I just made a reference to a really fucking stupid old website called Eric Conveys an Emotion. Oh my god, that was perfect. <laughs> was it Eric? It was Eric in yeah. motion. Uh, that's that's the thing for people to look for. Yeah. Christ. So so I managed to like convince like convince this guy to like show me this 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 loot loot, and I was like, okay, that's very good. Okay, and I'm pretending to take notes while I'm really hoping these guys are getting like close to me. Yeah, because you didn't plan. Nothing was planned beforehand. You no, just stormed I off just into the cave, leaving like those guys. Wanker. Like you didn't say, okay, well when I mention when I say this keyword. I, I jump into a tackle when I do no no nothing well you see I realised that at about this point <laughs> I was like oh no so out of character I'm like guys fucking help me I am so out of my depth and everyone's looking at me like no shit you idiot and like so I was like okay no I was like so I, I, I convinced the guy to basically turn his back on the entrance and I'm, I'm talking and I'm, I'm, sc- I'm just talking in bullshit and talking about how happy the guy's gonna be and how important this thing is and I'm scribbling shit down and I'm praying that you guys make a move. I think, is it your character who just ran in screaming? Yeah, then I ran, uh, at, at this point, uh, my character got angry. Because <laughs> uh, you, what was it, you were down to like 6 HP, because like, you've got like 15 hit points. And uh, that, that, that fucking dagger, the oh, uh, uh, thing to the neck. The, uh, uh, the dagger took me down to like 8 or something. It was like 8, so you were quite, yeah... You didn't have like a super amount of health, but you had like the, like about as much health as I had. Yeah, pretty much. So, so, so yeah, my, my character became. I had my character got enraged and then ran at him and hit him very hard with an axe in the back of his head. You didn't roll particularly well for that, didn't he? Turn around and just get angry. Because I'm well, sure that like, he did some damage to him. No, I think I, I, that, he's just a bit. He was a bit of a beefcake. Mm. Was it my first yeah. hit? Actually, go, I rolled a fucking twelve. Yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I rolled as good as I physically could. Maximum damage mm. to him, but he was just a bit of a beefcake. Yeah. He turned around and was like, you fucking what? <laughs> and then I was like, please don't hit me. <laughs> to be seen, he turned around instantly to see a dagger come towards his face. <laughs> okay, I didn't stab him in the face, I shanked him in the ribs. <laughs> oh no, you shanked him in the ribs and then the rogue. Yeah, I did like three damage. I was like, ah, yeah, that was he decided was to fucking... attack with a weapon rather than... Yeah, because like, my, ga- my, my, <laughs> my character, like he already used one of his spells and he doesn't want everyone to know that he's a warlock. Because <laughs> that that's not particularly a good thing. So he was like, fuck it, I'll just shank this guy. And then I basically, I kind of start tickling him with the tip of my dagger. And he's like, dude, that's a bit strange. So yeah, so we, you kind of took this this encounter that was supposed to be a challenging multi, uh, like multi-character encounter, I guess, to teach us how, yeah. how those kind of encounters yeah. work. 
and you completely undermined Matt's plans. I did. I completely. And then we and then we just curb stomped this guy because he was on his own. Yeah, yeah we just brutally murdered this yeah, one like, guy in a cave. The way that it works with like difficulties that each baddie's got like an XP value mm. and you've got a budget to spend like it needs it needs to be this much XP for medium difficulty this much for difficult blah blah but then the more people you've got they have, have multipliers so when it's, if there's like one or two of them it's just worth what they are but once you get like three or more they start it's like you add them up and then times by one and a half to reflect that they've just there's more of them yeah so like three is, three guys is a lot more difficult than two it's not just one guy extra it's they've got like a whole extra turn between them and okay, various cool. other sort of things and then so there's that and then there's also the fact that this big, um, he's a thug if anyone plays um, D&D. But basically he's like a leader of that bandit types and he's got yeah. advantage and bonuses when he's fighting with other people. <laughs> so he just immediately took all of that away. So it's just him by himself. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. No, no, no. I'm, <laughs> That's fine. I'm not My, my, I'm not my job is to be an enabler. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, this is going to get me killed. The, the, it... it, it and yeah, it's it might be a bit like go try. I'm not going to stop you trying. Oh, no, these things, no, no. But they will be. The, they, they will be harder. Be, they will be <laughs> harder. Probably. I need to take Depending measures. It's just like some random idiot bandits. Yeah. You don't really know any better. Yeah. So I'm sorry I undermined but your entire. No, 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 no. That's, that's, that's the point. That's what you meant. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know. The thing that worries me most is that because you rolled on the on like a random loot table. Yeah. Oh yeah. I crit. Persp- I, I I crit found treasure. You did, yeah. Because I'm like, I'm just, I love treasure, so I found some real good stuff. <laughs> that was again, because yeah, you you seem quite good at rolling natural twenties. Yeah. Mm. Watch the next game For I now. play. He'll die For in now. the first encounter. <laughs> when I'm rolling ones and getting shot in the neck by darts, <laughs> <laughs> um, and like never hitting with a throwing. How many throwing axes did you have? Like, you know, you had like four javelins and two throwing axes, and you missed with every single fucking one. I didn't throw my javelins. When did he likes them? He wants to keep them. Although I might try and get rid of them as soon as possible because that, their very existence annoys me. Well, yeah, because it's <laughs> you basically have to store like... them down your trouser leg. <laughs> like, where am I storing these things? <laughs> See, what you're doing is you put them down each trouser leg and then holding them See, when like a, you're crossfitting. When a daddy and a javelin love each other very much. <laughs> <laughs> Just a daddy and a javelin. Are you okay. calling my dwarf a daddy? To call him daddy. He likes it. Call my dwarf daddy. <laughs> Hello, I'm Johnny Daddy. Johnny Daddy. You're a punk rock star. Who knows what's happened? Mm. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, the worrying thing is, is that you rolled on this random loot table and the, the uh, one of the items we got, because you were obviously doing this all in, in, in private. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I could decide in advance. And sometimes when it's story relevant, mm. you, can, you, yeah. you will find this. But I was like, you know what, let's just, keep, just do this in random. But then, so you, there's a table to roll to see which table you roll on, if that makes sense. Yeah. And you roll pretty high in that, so rolled on a higher up table. And then you roll a dice to see how many times you rolled on that table and you got the maximum. And then when you rolled on that new table, it was two of the, it was like up to anything up to about 80 on a D100, like two D10s. Yeah. Anything up to 80 or so with like various potions and things. And then above that, it was, you know, various items. And one of the items, what what was it? It's like the. Wasn't the. the, um... You got a necklace of fireball. Yeah, we gave that to the wizard because, yeah. Which, in essence, casts fireballs. I can't exactly remember if Mm. there's like a limit to it or. Then there was like, oh, what was it? A a skin of. A decanter of unlimited water or something along. I can't remember Which exactly what it's that's, called. That's probably going to end Basically, up Basically, you just open it and either pour some water or I'll awfully, like, guide them out and, like, <laughs> attack people with it and, like, push them back. And, like, <laughs> and I can't help but feel that item is a mistake to give us because <laughs> the first thought that, that kind of, okay, that sort of occurred to us was, so if we get, like, a castle and we need to get in there or something, if we can plug up the windows, then we can just get on the roof and then just pour this in and then just flood the entire place. I'm pretty much place. telling you now, no buildings in this time period are watertight. <laughs> hey, it depends how much water okay. going to. Watertight is a relative term. Where if infinite water is going in, then, it do, then if a finite amount is coming out, then it's still infinite water inside the building. That's the thing. It's like so if it you t- have that logic. I'm not sure if your character, considering he has intelligence <laughs> eight, has that logic. Hey, I didn't say it was me that was going to do mine it. Mine has like twelve intelligence, so I think mine's going to come up with it because he's an asshole. Okay. It's like, okay. Yeah, I think there is a limit. It says unlimited, but I, I, I don't know. I haven't, looked, I haven't had time to look into you, how it actually works. I just gave it you, and I was like, well, I could fudge the rolls, or I could just be legit and give it you, and then hope if it is overpowered, the next time you get loot. You'll get less. You know it's what? It's not I'm like gonna... when we played no. Call of Cthulhu and we had functionally infinite sardines. No, you did not. Okay. We did. You allowed it. No, I didn't. I, I fucking said no. See, now, see, I'm getting this back because I DM'd Call of Cthulhu and you guys were shits. So fucking suffer, baby. <laughs> I'm getting you back with your fucking cornflakes and your functionally infinite sardines. Did we ever so... tell the cornflakes story? I don't know. I don't know if you told I feel told... like we would have done, but I can't remember. 
<laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just quickly skim it in case we told yeah. it before. Uh, yeah, we ha- we were in a in a building and we just happened to have cornflakes, and I was determined to find a use for well, them. You had to perform a ritual to banish the evil that was in the house, or at least try to. Yeah. And so, because we couldn't guard every door, what I decided to do was scatter the cornflakes around the door, <laughs> so that if anything walked through them, we'd hear them. I still maintain that was a fucking fantastic idea. It wasn't my fault Nothing that happened. the enemy that we were fighting could just simply have got around the cornflakes. <laughs> you mean it simply did get around the cornflakes? But if it... With fucking no problem at all. It didn't need to take any... It was just, dude, fucking cornflakes. I'm not walking on those. If, look, mo- half <laughs> half of the Lovecrafted enemies aren't very bright and would just walk through cornflakes. Okay, that is a really offensive generalisation. <laughs> that they are dumb cornflake walkers. <laughs> 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 Fucking cornflakes! Oh my god! Yes, yes, they're dumb cornflake walkers. That's I can't even remember why we had because it was that we got you them. Went, like, you at went... the end, uh, we went to a shop at the end of one session, and then the next session, we we're like, so we went to a shop. What did we get? And then we looked at the shopping list of what you bought, and it was like, like Corn sardines, flakes. boiled. What was it like cigarettes and like booze and. And like chalk and salt, yeah. and then cornflakes. And you guys are like, the fuck do we get cornflakes for? <laughs> oh, yeah, because I was like, we bought what? it in the previous session, yeah, and then the next session, yeah. up, we like, were like, why the fuck did we buy like, cornflakes? Like, like, fucking 10 minutes of the role playing was taken up by <laughs> discussing why the fuck you bought cornflakes for a fucking banishment <laughs> ritual. <laughs> I said, I don't even remember why you bought fucking Corfo. I'm sitting there going, it was a good idea at the time, I'm well, sure. I don't, I don't even know if it was a good idea at the time, <laughs> honestly. Oh, God, that was fun. That, that was a fun thing. Like, cornflakes and functionally infinite sardines notwithstanding, that was fun. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that, that was that was the D&D what we played. Yeah, that was pretty good. Are we going to car- uh, try and carry it on over the Skypes yeah. when you're back in the France place? Yeah, hopefully. That'd be good. Give um, Roll20 a try, which I know is a website that you can do D- D&D on. And beyond that, I, and other role-playing games... But beyond that, I have no idea how it works. Yeah. I'm sure we'll figure but it out. So. I've heard good things, so yeah, we'll figure it out. And... Yeah. Well, I guess speaking of like tabletop and, and the things with maps and stuff, you, you you got some fun emails before we started recording. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Would you like to tell the lovely viewers? It's an interesting D and D tactic. No, no, it's not. It's an interesting football tactic. So <laughs> warning in advance, it's football related. <laughs> Content warning: football. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Content warning balls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Balls deep in the no, ball yeah. spot. <laughs> Not too much to it, but I'm going to have to play football after recording. And I got an email um, saying, that, well, I'm back, you know, might as well make the most of it and we'll come up with some tactics in advance for the game. Um, we've previously had tactics such as the butterfly tactic, which is when you run up the outside and then back down the inside and basically draw out a big butterfly. <laughs> which is, and, and the guy who came up with it was annoyed that we never did it. So he's I like, right, I, I will come up with a tactic for today. So he's come up with a tactic based around the Coriolis effect. <laughs> somehow, you know, the Coriolis is, effect. <laughs> yeah, in essence, you know, the force that on something when you're spinning it round, or the force that seems to be on something. Yeah. Frames of reference, I know with blah, blah, blah. mechanics, that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if you shoot something from a long enough distance, it'll yeah, go. It'll, it'll, yeah. Because of, yeah. Look it up on Wikipedia. Yeah, it's not the most interesting. It's, it's, but it's really easy to, to So fol- following on from that, while we're trying to set up the podcast, my phone's constantly going off with various other people coming up with the maps that they've drawn for how this tactic's going <laughs> to work. Coriol- but how they're going to be fired at approximately <laughs> a quarter of a mile at the goal. <laughs> and as they're going, because they're spinning, they're going to start getting more and more off course as a, as a team. And... <laughs> I actually I don't know how this works. I'm, tr- no, I'm trying no to explain it. Works. I was like, there was one like someone was like, okay, here's the pitch and there's a red line. It's like a spiral and then an arrow into the goal. And I'm like, <laughs> like that is that some, is that a line that it, the entirety of your team has to follow? You can't. Um, what what if about well, the football? I, I just don't understand. I don't I'm I'm sure it sounds sciencey, so it's bound yeah, to work. I can't right? wait. Okay, have you implemented the asymptote maneuver? <laughs> that might be good. Like also like the infinite line, because <laughs> the, the, the quantum football mechanics. Quantum football. What was the the We've other one? Scored a goal and haven't scored a goal. Ooh. <laughs> I would watch the shit out of football <laughs> if you were breaking the laws of physics. We won or didn't? We and didn't. won and, no, and didn't. oh yeah, we won and didn't. <laughs> it's like the goalie that goes off in a plane and becomes infinite. 
I guess you, you could claim that that's, uh, that's what a draw really is. You <laughs> yeah. won and lost? Yeah. Uh, what was yeah. the other map you got? Because you got two oh, different so interpretations. The one that was a big um, spiral that ends up in the just, ends up goal. just going in the goal. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that seems legit. The next one was exaggerated from that, but with actual player positions marked on it as well in like a big circle. And then, yeah, the ball ends up in the goal. It honestly Jobs just good. like synchronised swimming to me. <laughs> it's like, okay, it's like, you've all got to get your little costume. You've got to show some leg at this point. You described to me one tactic that was like a where you, oh, yeah, was like the, two sets of players yeah, orbiting next, each other. So this went them. off on a tangent then. So there's just yeah, the next tactic was yeah, two concentric circles with like some players on the outside rotating one direction and a few less players in the on an inner circle rotating the opposite direction. And then there's the midfield equinox. That, uh, <laughs> at a certain point, at a certain point, you're effectively just creating a a movable circle pit. Yeah. <laughs> um, now the the thing is, this is. Uh, this is really weird to me because I've literally read a book where this happens. <laughs> there is what? a book by Robert Rankin who's not to be confused. I'm not even surprised. Yeah, not to be confused with Ian Rankin, the crime writer. No, Robert Rankin, who writes weird fucking books <laughs> that can best be described as... Um, can probably best be described as Lovecraft if instead of like a... Um, just an old world racist twat uh, was actually a drunk bloke down the pub <laughs> telling you stories that are pretty much the same thing, but all happen in the town of Brentford. <laughs> okay. Um, he did a book called Knees Up Mother Earth, um, right. and I believe it does involve a Lovecraftian threat because nearly all his books do and are sold usually by um, a, a, a guy called Jim Pooley. Okay. Who's, yeah. Jim Pooley from Brentford. Yeah, from Brentford. Okay. He's, he, him and his friend Tom O'Malley were both unemployed. Okay. And they usually solve these <laughs> otherworldly threats. Uh, Robert Rankin is a weird author. But yeah, the, the book, in the book Knees at Mother Earth, he ends up in charge of Brentford Town FC. Oh. Okay. And they have to win for reasons that I believe... It involves time travel in the end. Of course it <laughs> okay. yeah, why, why else? Not? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they keep and that's what they they do tactics like that because he doesn't know football he doesn't know what he's fucking doing so they invent all these tactics like just making a line down the centre of the pitch just walking forward because they're like they're not forming actually... a fucking phalanx yeah they're like they can't actually do anything about that and it's not against the rules because no one's offside is, is that against like a football phalanx is that okay yeah that, uh, there's yeah. technically nothing wrong with it um, also they're all instead of a football kit uh, they all wear caftans Ooh. Because the the club is in such bad financial troubles that they need to put so many sponsors on it that a caftan is the only thing that has enough surface area to put all the, the okay. sponsors on. Right. Yeah. Ne- uh, yeah. Um, that's a book that exists. I guess. It's, it's, um, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. It's it's the only time I've I've read something about football and not not just instantly like had my eyes glaze over. <laughs> so see, football can be interesting. Yeah. yeah only provided you, you involve time travel. <laughs> The and Coriolis ob- effects and obs- uh, absurdist like tactics. <laughs> oh god! Well, so, okay, uh, we are we are not a football podcast. No, moving on. <laughs> oh, what else? Okay, so I, I want to complain again because I, I had a very very similar complaint two weeks ago with the last podcast. We were talking about the uh, the new Overwatch hero being teased. Oh yes, yeah. Yep. Um, Fucking guess what happens the day we finished recording. Was it what you said was going to happen the it day we finished recording? fucking said. Yeah, like literally like that night she's put on the PTR. <laughs> and I just, I, I, it's like such ambivalence, like genuine brutal rage and elation. Because like, I actually really like her and I think she's really fun to play as. But I was just so mad because I was like, if we'd left it a fucking day. We well, would have been relevant. Just think how bad it's going to be this time because we, you know, no, shock- there is something that's going to happen. Yeah, okay, um, no, no, but it's going to be worse because you know, shock horror. We do record these several days in advance so that it can be edited, you know, together and sorted out and, and uploaded and stuff. So we know that there's always going to be the chance of by the time it goes up, then something we say is going to have more news yep. to it. But this time we're recording it even earlier because yeah. some fucker just happens to be oh, in the country yeah. right I, now. I have to, you know, meet the like. D- D-list objective, which is like see family and stuff. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely D-list. Yeah. So I'm away for a few days. So yeah. we, this was the only t- chance we had to do it. So we're now super early. So God knows what's <laughs> going to happen in the next fucking week before okay. this gets uploaded. So what I'm thinking is that 
I'll just I'll just list a few things off the top of my head and we react appropriately and then like as it goes on I'll just edit out what <laughs> hasn't happened because yeah like um uh John Romero you, you know you know the guy like who's yep. with the stupid hair <laughs> and did the Doom thing yeah John Romero has announced Daikatana two Daikatana another day <laughs> oh wow. I, I I I I was not prepared to get more big sold in my life. Yeah, it's it, it, <laughs> yeah, Daikatana two, Daikatana another day. Is he going to make us his bitch again? He's yes. That's actually the tagline is, oh, hi, I'm John Romero from Doom, I think, and I'm going to make you my my bitch again." If that's all right. If that's sir. okay, sir <laughs> or madam, I don't want to presume. See, that's it's funny. A bit of, I think it's a working title, but you know, it's it's you know it's. I, I'm looking forward to it. Apparently, it's it's got it's got a big big sword. So there's die die katana. No, die 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 cast die katana. Die die die, my <laughs> darling katana. Yeah, that that's the name of E1M1. Ah, die yeah. die die, my my darling katana. Yeah. Ellipses. That was the best we could fucking come up with. So I'm quite I'm quite surprised by that. You know that does remind me of that other piece of news that's actually really happening this week. Okay. Um, that um, Randy Pitchford has um, actually given birth to a live goat. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know he was pregnant. Well, he's... Um... Oh. Oh, have you seen the pictures? It's super adorable. Oh. <laughs> I love a man with a kid. Uh-huh. <laughs> Boo. Oh. Unfortunately, he's called it Colonial Marines 2. Oh. Uh. oh. See, look, I, I, don't li- I, I don't like Randy Pitch- Pitchford, but, you know, I think that him forcing us to hate his kid is a bit much. Yeah. It's like, look, mate, look, that, that child is innocent. Please. <sighs> And then, oh, there's that other thing. That other thing, like, that actually happened yeah, this week. That really, really happened, that honestly. That really, really happened. Um, you guys will have probably heard of this, but for the viewers who probably haven't, Peter Molyneux and David Cage are teaming up <laughs> to write and direct a new game. Oh, really now? Yeah, for the PS5 that has also been announced this week. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's PS5, PS5 another day. <laughs> 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 Personally, I would have gone PS5, PS4 another day, but. <laughs> the PS5 another day. The worst part about the PS5 is it's literally a PS2 glued to a PS3. <laughs> or alternately, just five PS1s, like <laughs> nailed together. With a GameCube on the side, so it has the handle. <laughs> yeah. Because it's portable now, because the Switch is, yeah. has, has actually outsold. Um, the uh, outsold antibiotics. Oh, yeah, like you know the the big the, farmer is scared. Big farmer's terrified of the switch. <laughs> big farmer's terrified of the switch. <laughs> <laughs> so what about this game that David Cage and Peter Molyneux are making? <laughs> Who the fuck cares? <laughs> <laughs> Are we done with this bit now? No, right. no. Total legit news section. This, this, is, this is totally legit. Okay, so yeah, Peter Molyneux, David Cage, um, uh, are working on a game yeah. together called Beyond Detroit Black and White 2. Again. <laughs> Another day. <laughs> You know what's the best part about this is? Is that because this is a recorded podcast, you could have just sat there and got. I need five minutes to think of my name. Oh, shit! <laughs> instead, of, instead of doing what you just did there. You know what I could have done? I don't care. It... Yeah. Anyway, sorry. That that was that was the uh, the working title. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 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 The, so so no one would would do it. But it, there have been leaks confirmed by top Kotaku journalist J.K. Rowling. Yeah. Who's who's been hired this week? Actually, really weird turn of I guess if you're good at writing like about wizards and Horcruxes and stuff, you know, you're really good at talking about how big farmers afraid of the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> and what else has J.K. Rowling got to do now, anyway? <laughs> I don't know. Since she, 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 she wrote those books, she wrote you know, those Lord books. of the Rings, and then yeah, <laughs> turns out she's a massive Dark Souls fan. Yeah, yeah. massive Dark Souls all? fan. Another Dark Souls Seven has been announced, bundled with the ne- with, with the previous three. Yeah, did not expect Miyazaki to make that move, but I'm okay with. I mean, that. he said he wasn't going to do any more Dark Souls. Well, books. fucking well. I- but it turns out he was just going to do four of them at once. That's what he meant. He says, I'm not going to do another Dark another. Souls. Yeah, he's... he's like, I'm going to do four more Dark <laughs> yeah, Souls so at the same time. time. Yeah. So just, just think of it. It's like, you know, he was because he was looking at the, the market of Pokemon, how they released basically two games at once. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. he was like, 
Well, I can do fucking better than that. So now we have Dark Souls Seven Johto region. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where you can also. I prefer. Uh, I prefer Dark Souls Sun personally. Dark Souls Sun. Uh, Although Leaf Green does was... have its uh, its bonuses, you know. Yeah. I mean, I guess, but I guess I'm kind of more of a, I'm a bit more fickle. What are you looking at? What the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you are. <laughs> Okay, so that was the news. Thank you. Uh, yeah, um, you heard it here first. We were talking about Arissa from Overwatch. Yeah, is we how were. this started. Yeah, so Arissa from Overwatch. <laughs> that game, what I like. <laughs> she, she's a tank character, and she's fun to play as, and she's on the PTR for a bit longer because fucking god knows what. Yeah, does anyone? F- There's no one's listening after that. <laughs> What's the point? We could just literally sit here and fart for the next 25 minutes and people, like, no one would hear it. On the bright side, uh, with Arissa, there is the thing that I want everyone to do, which I've already said this on stream. But oh. her, her weapon is called, uh, is it Supercharger, I think? Yes. Which is like this big thing that she's got on her back. It's like a drum. Yeah, it looks like a drum. Uh, she listening. takes, she, yeah, <laughs> she takes off her back and, and it puts makes down noises, and, and puts drums. down, and it gives everyone a damage boost, okay. like like how Mercy's damage boost works, where it's like a, a, if it's if they're in line of sight of it, mm. and it can be destroyed, and it because it just sits there, um, like as a physical thing yeah. on on the okay. floor. Think of like soldiers' biotic grenade thing that he throws on the floor. Yeah, that game that, that game drummer that Matt's always yeah, playing. <laughs> Yeah, and this is for the people at home, yeah. Jesus Christ. Oh my goodness. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's an ultimate version that it lasts for so long. Um, I am insisting on referring to that thing as a death bongo. <laughs> it's a pretty good name. Okay, I don't know yeah. why they went with supercharger. That's I'm, stupid. I'm determined to try and make death bongo stick in people's heads. Are you forcing okay. because, that name? Yeah, because it's a stupid name that I like an unreasonable amount. Because <laughs> I like the juxtaposition of the light-hearted bongo with mankind's own mortality. <laughs> Fucking okay. That went from zero to miserable. <laughs> Fucking am- you dark motherfucker. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, Arissa's cool. I really like Arissa. Um, her gun is so satisfying. It is really fun. Yeah, it's because it, it feels like it's got a punch. I don't think it does too much damage because she she is a tank at the end of the day. But it is it's got a great noise and it's got a good feel to it. It, it somehow it really reminds me of how Divas uh, when she's out of her mech, her gun feels except unlike that, it's a hit scan weapon. So. It's- yeah, you know, so it it doesn't it shouldn't feel anything like it, but I don't know why it just feels like a rapid fire version of that gun for some reason mm. to me. Uh, she's got like her alternate is makes her immune alternate, not ultimate. Sorry, I can't speak. Her alt fire is a like a little graviton surge thing where you can yank people out of cover, which is quite fun. And honestly, that needs to come in and crush the bastion meta, which is because they buff bastion to shred barriers and stuff. Which... And it's like, I mean, I'm just super salty because I've lost pretty much all of my placement matches purely because, like, they've been a Reinhardt protecting a Bastion and a Mercy damage boosting him. And it's like, well, like, we have nothing to counter. Yeah, and since Bastion can heal. He can heal like, like crazy now. Well, yeah. they did take it down a percentage, but it's still, like, we need Orissa there to counter that, but I digress. Yeah. Um, also, she's got the, like, immovable thing where she fortifies and she becomes immune to, like, Crowd control, like she can't be charged by Reinhardt. Um, I don't think Graviton Surge will affect her. I don't think so. Just basically basic crowd control things like that just won't affect her. She can also throw down a barrier. She also throw down like a little Winston kind of like a one sided shield, which is super useful, especially if you put your death bongo. Yeah. Yeah. Put your death bongo behind it, and then like <laughs> people have difficulty killing it. So I've been really enjoying playing her. I, I don't know. She's just, she's she takes a good few other abilities from other current playable heroes and i think it's a good mix yeah I think it's yeah. a lot of fun it's yeah. also nice to have a rate a proper ranged like tank because... she's definitely an off tank she's yeah not I, mean, I mean even though i know zarya is like a proper like, like zarya and diva both have proper ranged weapons well i know I, okay all of them have ranged weapons but how good how good they are but like how good they are at like proper range um because like Zarya works best at cl- uh, at relative close range, because her alt fire is you can fire it over a long distance, but obviously it's very slow. And like Roadhog's no good over range, and Divas Divas shotguns basically do nothing once they're about three feet outside uh, away from her. Yeah. They're totally like a real shotgun. Though. Yeah, like <laughs> oh, an yeah. actual shotgun. Yeah, it's not like shotguns can be used to shoot things out the middle of the goddamn air. That's you ridiculous. Know? Yeah. No. <laughs> if you if you're stood literally three feet in front of a shotgun and someone shoots you, you are completely unharmed. You will feel a light breeze. You will be like, ooh. 
So what I've taken from this is that someone from Blizzard listens to this podcast because this a drum based character that buffs people is literally what we were talking oh, about. Shit. Oh shit! Fucking ago. hell! <laughs> oh! But we didn't say that you you She's sh- using bongos, not cowbells. Mm. So they didn't get it all right. But mm. I mean, if but... they did get it right, then they'd have to pay us. Ah, true. So yeah, true. I'm waiting for what was my character? I was just, I would just jump on people and scream in their face. I don't yeah, recall. I, I can't remember. I, like, I remember yours, which is like a melee based healer where you basically go up and hit people oh, and you go fucking walk life. it off. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and just punch people. But yeah, fu- oh my god. You're a Rissa. <laughs> you're, you're a Rissa, dude. That's so rad. You're like, you're a weird centaur robot with horns. Yeah, this is yeah. good. Yeah. Arissa's centaur legs kind of unnerve me a little bit okay. when you see her kind of cantering along. Yeah. Does she have a sexy centaur butt? It, no. She does not, no. Because everyone else has, like, vacuum-packed butts. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, it, it, it's, it's, it's butt watch, let's be honest. <laughs> but, yeah. What I saw, it was, it was a kind of funny thing. Um, so they mentioned in the, like, dev notes, well, not, like, uh, the, the Jeff Kaplan, like, updates, um, it, like, mentioning how it was interesting from a design perspective to try and design a female character that doesn't look female. Mm. It doesn't have robo-baps. Yeah, okay. um, which was funny to then read the comments of you know people getting very angry about that because they they mentioned the concept of gender, mm. so that was funny. I mean, Bastion is. I think they've actually said that Bastion is genderless, which is like okay. Well, that's that makes fine. sense because he's yeah, he's basically Zenyata, a walking gun. Yeah, Zen, Zenyata, I'm not going to give genders to my walking guns. Well, maybe you should, <laughs> but yeah, like so I don't understand why people were like, yeah, it's just. I guess it's a buzzword that gets people angry. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, yes. Yeah. So also, people... Because I've been threatening people who've been, like, typing out angry comments. So, I, I, I... You know, I want to, but I just don't... I just can't be asked. Yeah. I don't think my heart's in it. So, I think that they would... The listener would be like, I could write out an angry comment. She could tell me to stop, but I don't feel her heart's in it. <laughs> would anyone really get anything out of it? No, not really. But, yeah. If I mean, only you're... everyone on the internet realised this. <laughs> Well, <laughs> when you start typing, this argument, but would it really benefit anyone at all? I could I'm not from t- just arguing. I could type this uh, uh, this rebuttal, which is effectively just calling them a twat. But why though? <laughs> that that's all we're getting a bit deep now. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like looking forward to her going live because fuck the bastion mater. 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 Meta. Mater. Because I was going. Meta is better, and I got confused. Yeah. Is it isn't Mater that that character from fucking Cars? What? Yes. Yeah. What? Yeah. I'm upset that I know that because cars is shit. <laughs> I'm. I feel good that I. I don't know that. I don't know why I know that, considering I've never seen Cars or Cars Two. I think I've seen Cars. cars Three. There yeah. is about Cars Eighteen and the planes one now. As oh, well. yeah, fuck it oh fuck off! And trains probably as well. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Yeah, well, so. well, presumably. And then wait, wait, that's what it's all been. The whole, they're yeah. building they're playing up. Playing the long so. game. Um, played a bit of Titanfall Two. That's all right. Yeah, yeah, we played. <laughs> that, that's all we've got to say yeah. on it. Right. Anyway, moving on. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Uh, I, I need to play more of it. Interesting mechanics. Did you play the first one? I did not play the first one, no. Isn't that like a... Isn't that on PC? I yes. Oh. It, well, <laughs> Uh, it's because I remember it was notorious for having like oh it was exclusive for like a week or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, it was it was. Um, one of those games that doesn't have any compression on its audio files. Oh, so, so it was like 70 gig. It was something stupid like 60 gig or something. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, most games are kind of like fucking huge now, which is a bit annoying. But yeah, I, I need to play more of that, really. I don't have too, too much to say about it because I've only really played like an hour. So, but no, that seems pretty promising so far. Um, oh, yeah. We went to see Logan. Yep. I haven't yet. Oh <laughs> my God. I need to. It's been on my list, but I've been so... Busy with things, I've mm. just not had a chance yet. Yeah, so we can't really say too much because no. a, you should just go fucking watch. Yeah, Logan. just go watch it because it is. Fu- I mean, like I'm, I'm, I'm an X Men fan way back. Yeah. I used to read. I got like three. You liked X Men before it was cool. I did honestly. It made me very <laughs> angry because people I knew who were making fun of me in a mean kind of way for being a comic book nerd and collecting comic books went and saw me and was like, "Oh my god, I love Jean Grey so much." <laughs> and she, like. Like she's so good though, isn't it? Like she's she's really like she's not very good at be- being a psychic, and I'm like, bitch, she is fucking woven into the very fabric of the fucking universe. But whatever, that's fine. And it was like, oh my god, <laughs> like like basically, it just bugged me because I'm a bit of a hipster, and people I hated 
we're suddenly like, oh my god, X-Men's so good. I'm like, you don't even fucking know. Yeah. To be honest, the only time you're allowed to legitimately hate someone for their their tastes in X-Men is if they think that Cyclops is the best character. Unless it's that, that uncanny X-Men run that Joss Whedon wrote and uh, penned by John Cassidy, where he uh, he loses his powers, he gets them removed, and he turns into Gun Man. And he just he shoots people. He starts shooting people. Oh. Which is awesome! <laughs> that is the only time Cyclops has been interesting. Yeah, that's the It's when he's time. depowered and just starts shooting people. <laughs> yeah, there is context, but I'm not going to give it. <laughs> um... But no, lo- I love I love the X Men movies, even though they're fucking garbage. Let's be honest. They're, like like the first few, are just, they're quite kitty kind of silly superhero movies. I, I love them for that. They're just they're, they're just kind of like action films yeah. that you can watch. Yeah. Like they, they, they did a right for comic book films in a time before comic book yeah. films were all films. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I will <laughs> definitely say yes. That is true. But I mean, like my only couple of problems with it is, what well, with uh, with the early X Men movies are. <sighs> Well, I'm going to say Anna Paquin. <laughs> because she, at the least at that time, I haven't seen her or anything since, could, couldn't really act fantastic. I mean, don't get me wrong, she's better than a lot of people, but also the fading in and out of the accent kind of bugged the fuck out of me. It's like, look, even... St- and like In the second or third movies, they were just like, oh yeah, she doesn't have a fucking accent anymore. Because she was so bad at it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, oh, and, uh, and Halle Berry wasn't a very good Storm. Either. Like, do you know what happens to a toad when it's struck by lightning? Like, fuck off! Get a good wig! Nobody <laughs> wants you here! God, you're annoying. Please put some more effort in. Sorry, it just really bugs me. <laughs> I, I've and noticed, then as she yeah. goes on, like, they, they kind of figure out how to characterize it better. Yeah. And, like, she can play it better. But the I first think, movie, she was really bad in that. Yeah, I think Storm's kind of a hard character to, to characterize. And I, I personally would probably not have picked Halle Berry to be her either. Mm. No, so. no hate against Halle Berry. Just don't think it's the role for her. Yeah, um, yeah. But the, there is an interesting thing. Cause like without, because it's that, that thing of like not wanting to spoil anything about Logan. Mm. Um, other than say it's really good and really fucking brutal. It's brutal. <laughs> yeah. There's like it. There's a startlingly amount, like large amount of swearing in the first like fifty minutes. But that does calm it down. It is. It does. It does kind of ease off that, but yeah. it kind of makes sense giving some some of the context, not spoiling. Yeah, uh, one of the the most surreal moments is is one of uh, Patrick Stewart's early lines as as Xavier is simply to go fuck off, Logan. <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> which is, he's, he's wanted to say that for years. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck off, it's seventeen Logan. years ago, something something like that. Yeah, yeah. the first like X Men. Tw- so I think it was like two thousand. I think I saw something. like an interview with oh. with Hugh Jackman and. Few of the others. And he was like, "Yeah, I've been playing Wolverine for seventeen years. Oh, yeah. seventeen glorious years, and I am including like the Wolverine and, and <laughs> Wolver- Wolverine fucking Origins or whatever it was, which were fucking awful movies." Yeah, what? Uh, I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah, but I, I love Hugh Jackman as as Wolverine. I love him as an actor. He is so good. He's such a nice guy. I as well. know. He's such a lovely gent. <laughs> And he's what? such a nerd. And like, like, did you see that he was being interviewed and he was he was talking about his son Oscar. Like, his friend was, like, going on about, like, oh, so your dad's Wolverine, I bet that's really cool. He's, like, he's, like talking about him. Mm. And, like, his son waits until his, until his mate's finished and he goes, mate, my dad is so frigging boring. He is nothing <laughs> like Wolverine. He's not even cool. And he's just, like, standing outside the door going, oh, that's fair. <laughs> you see him in the background, Hugh Jackman in the background, and be like, Oh, it's like a single tear. <laughs> I, I did. I did read a bit of a, a thing that um, I think it was from an interview with David Hayter, who you know most yep. people know as the voice of Solid Snake. But he's also he's, he's also, also screen. Yeah, he's also the screenwriter of the first two X Men movies and amongst Watchmen. other things and Watchmen and yeah, which was like things. one of the only things that like because Alan Moore was just incapable of anything saying anything nice. But he yeah. was like, you know, I guess this is the least horrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, he, more more accurately, if I remember rightly, he wrote, wrote the original draft of the Watchmen's script, although it was oh, changed okay. Okay. quite a bit. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, I read this. I read this interview with him, and it was talking about like little little tidbits from from the making of the early X Men movies. And one of them was that, that um, Hugh Jackman was just kind of too nice, and so they were wanting, and so trying to get him to have a bit more grit about his his uh, his performance, they were trying to get him to method act a bit. So they said like, no, be angry and just kind of you know miserable all the time. Like, go home and start an argument with your wife, and then co- and then come in and switch, which apparently Hugh Jackman just turned around and went, mate, if I do that, I'm gonna be the one coming in crying. <laughs> Let's see the right. Oh, bless you, Hugh. He's so sweet. But the, the funny thing is, like, how we kind of got it was um, in his trailer, he'd wake up in the morning and there'd be no hot water. 
So he'd have to shower in like freezing cold water <laughs> and he'd be like, like, he'd be wanting to cry out and scream, because obviously he's an Aussie in, like, freezing fucking temperatures, yeah. having a cold shower. And he was like, so that was that's, like, the, the character of Wolverine, is, like, he's having a cold shower and he wants to scream and be angry, but he can't, because his wife's asleep in the next room. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of his, his thing, and I, I'm like, I love that man so much. He is so fucking uh, awesome. I guess that was just on the first movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, oh God, I remember before... Like, people were like, oh, Hugh Jackman, uh, he peed himself while on stage. Like, he's complaining. Yeah, he did, that's true. Yeah, most, uh, a lot of singers have done that. Because well, yeah, it turns out, like, like, you know, proper... Proper you know. singing, because it releases muscles that you yeah. hold when you need to pee. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, like, people are like, oh, he's just so lame. Like, I'm, like, a lot of the, like, kind of Heath Ledger Joker kind of thing, because, like, oh, it's going to be so shit, oh, it's the worst. And then people are like... People can't imagine anyone else playing Wolverine mm. now because yeah. yeah. he is Wolverine, and it's oh that was uh... yeah. What what I was gonna uh, gonna say because I have a theory about Logan. Okay, the film Logan or the character? The film Logan. Logan. Okay, um, because it, again, like, I it's it's one of those movies where most of the things that are really really cool about it are really cool because of being kind of shocking. So I kind of don't want to talk about yeah. anything about yeah. it, with the exception of one thing, because I just find it a, a kind of interesting theory. Now, minor, minor, minor spoilers, and it's a, mm. a minor plot point. Mm. Well, it's not, it's barely a plot. Okay, mm. it is a plot point, but it's a mm. minor point, which is that in that universe, yep. the X Men comics exist. Okay, yeah, I've, I've seen a yeah. quick yeah. clip of that. So yeah. you see, there's like a, a screenshot of Hugh Jackman holding up yeah. a copy of, of, of X Men, and it looks like old school X Men, like the way they've, co- yeah. they've coloured it to look like the ones from like, like the, the 70s and 80s. Kind of thing, yeah. Yeah. So it's established that X Men is also a fictional property where the characters like Wolverine in the proper Wolverine outfit yeah. is a thing, and they also establish in Logan like they reference some events in the earlier movies as well, and they and it's sort of hint at that that the comics were ba- were originally based off the true stories of the X Men, and then they just went off and did their own thing. Okay. So, Logan does not feel like any other X-Men movie. It doesn't feel like it exists in the same universe at all. It really fucking does. This is this is a movie where Johnny Cash feels appropriate. Yeah. Uh, the fact that it used Johnny Cash's Hurt mm. as the trailer Which, is fucking Which, honestly, fitting. that was fucking cheating. Oh, That song. But at the same time, it fucking worked so <laughs> perfectly. Yeah, you... Oh. <sighs> You, using Johnny Cash's hurt is pretty much a guaranteed way to make people have feelings about whatever yeah. you're showing yeah. them. Because yeah. I think like, most people will agree it's one of the best covers ever made. Well, yeah, it is. But, um, but anyway. Yeah. So this movie does not feel like it exists in the same universe as any of the other movies at all. So my theory is that all the previous X-Men movies are actually movies from that from Logan's universe. <laughs> They are the okay. adaptations I, of the comic yeah, the books, comics, yeah. and that's why they don't feel the same, and also why, you know, like, minor sort of issues with continuity sort of kind of bring up, because then the whole, the, the problem with the X-Men universe has fucking batshit continuity in it's the movies. It's insanity. And they, they rebooted and everything, and yeah. it's still crazy. <laughs> and so, yeah, I, I, I personally think that all the other movies are the, yeah, they are, they are the movies in Logan's universe of... The uh, the adaptations of the comics. Head canon accepted. That's fucking brilliant. Yeah, all right. Because that's the that's the yeah. only way I can find to to make it feel like that movie belongs in that series. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> no, that's rad. But yeah, there's so many beautiful little touches in Logan, especially as someone you know like me who knows literally everything, not hyperbole, uh, <laughs> ever about the X Men. Like, do you know Rogue? Yeah. She she put Ms. Marvel in a coma cuz she didn't she couldn't originally fly. Mm. Yeah. Did you know Nightcrawler and Rogue are, are like siblings as well? Foster siblings, kind of adopted yeah. siblings, but yeah. You see, uh, I also, thought you were going to I th- I, I, I see, thought... I was trying to come out with something stupid, but I yeah. just couldn't. Did you know Quentin Quire is actually a dork? Well, yeah, he is. Like, Glob Herman is also the most sexiest mutant. Oh, yeah. And I, I do want to see him in a movie, but I know that they'd never be able to pull off the effect for it. Yeah. But you see, what I thought you were going to do was sit there and go, oh, do you know Wolverine that... has claws. No, no. Do you know that in the next comic book... <laughs> in the next, in the, in next the next comic, comic book, book, that Pyro is going to do a is making a game with David Cage <laughs> that's going to be called X-Men 2, X-Men Another Day. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but Xavier and Magneto have bought switches. 
and they're threatening Big Pharma with them. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel as good. No, no, no. <laughs> no. But no, no. So it's like, I do like, there's little nods, there's little things. I'm sitting there like, <sighs> like there's a character when, like, you know what I'm talking about, that pops Ooh. up. And I turn around and I go, I know, I'm going to call them this. Even though it's not completely correct, it's fucking basically that. Yeah. yeah. And, like, little things like that where you go, oh, you'll hear a name. And it won't, like, like the original X-Men movies were good with that. Like, you know, when they're in the bar, like, after Wolvie's done his cage fighting and, and Rogue's sitting there. And there's, like, a guy on TV called, like, he's like, oh, yes, we're interviewing Dr. Hank McCoy. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, oh when, like, in the second one where... <laughs> Introducing, like, I think, one of the first of, of the weird continuity, continuity things errors, in that series. Yeah. And then there's also the, uh, like, when Mystique goes into that uh, thing and looks at the list of mutants. There's, like, Remy LeBeau, and there's, like, all these other, like, yeah. uh, names of mutants. Like, little things like that. There's fun things like that. Mm. Which I like. And, like, little references to Logan's past, because, you know, he spent a long time in Japan. Yeah. Um, there's things like that. Like, little subtle stuff. And I'm just like, this is made with so much genuine love for this character and this and this, this X-Men. And I'm just like, oh, it's it is, lovely. It is a really <laughs> good... It's a really good send-off for um, Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart playing yeah, those yeah. two characters. They both said they're not going to yeah, do yeah. anymore. Well, Patrick Stewart didn't say it for a while, and then you said it on um, that Graham Norton yeah. interview. Yeah. With that. You mean the one that lasted for, like, <laughs> years and years? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hugh Jackman put a thing on uh, Twitter and things, a photo of him doing a, an interview a few years back or whatever it was with him and Fassbender and McAvoy sat together, presumably when one of the other X-Men films came yeah. out. And then he tweeted a picture of him in the recent interview where it's him, Ian McKellen, and Patrick Stewart stand <laughs> together. And he's wearing basically the same clothes. Or quite just a suit. So yeah. he's like, it looks, he looks basically the same. And he's like, this is the world's longest interview. <laughs> <laughs> Those two guys are aged like yeah. 50 years. Or whatever, and you know, you're looking the same. That makes sense. But yeah, so he said on there, that, you know, everyone knows that it's um, Hugh Jackman's last one. Although I still hope that he comes back and does something with Deadpool. Oh. Yeah. He said he's not going to, but if he just makes a quick cameo in it or something, it'd yeah, be excellent. That would be cool. Sort of like his cameo in um, X Men First Class. Yeah, and he just Which, sort of. Yeah. yeah, go fuck yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, not okay. being rude, that's actually what Wolverine says. Yeah, yeah so. something, something like that would be yeah. excellent. But yeah, so Patrick Stewart said, you know, after they're still talking about it and they're both getting emotional, apparently when they were watching it, like. Um, Patrick Stewart was sat there mm. and um, Hugh Jackman reached over and just grabbed his hand yeah. in like, one of the emotional bits. Oh. Oh. And then like they both like shed, started like oh. tearing up and I'm fucking and he, tearing and up. And oh Patrick my God. Stewart because I mean I don't know don't, I don't know what they were crying out or whatever because but presumably something vaguely emotional happens. There's, there's a few emotional moments. Yeah, but um Patrick Stewart said at that point he's like you know what like after talking about this there's no way we can top this so you know what that's my last one as well. Yeah, and yeah. just decided, sort of decided yeah. there and then. He's like, "Look, we're not going to top this because this film is excellent." It yeah, is, so this is, is a good send off for me too. Honestly, I hated it because I, I, I fucking, I was crying in the cinema, and I, I'm fucking, I'm, I was just like, "Fuck, <laughs> <laughs> shit!" I was like, bringing out a tissue and just like, "This is such a beautiful moment." Oh my goodness! No, I'm getting so bad at films recently. Like, I used to be fine until like maybe like five years ago or something. I don't know, but now like anything upsetting happens in a film, I'm just gone. Oh, <laughs> it's just like no. Nope, no, I'm going to try and hide this. This is ridiculous. Well, in fairness, it is. It, it he is, is, he's dead inside. <laughs> it he's is. They go. Yes, there is definitely emotions happening, and I'm fucking just crying oh, hi, my David. heart out. <laughs> <laughs> emotions. <laughs> I don't. I. I am like any emotion vampire. I cannot. Uh, he, you, you are like David Cage. The event horizon for emotions. Yeah, maybe that's it. I've just played too many David <laughs> Cage games. I can't. I can't experience emotions. <laughs> No, honestly, actually, I, I've noticed that as as of honestly as I've got older, older as well. I I am noticing like Feelings. I am getting more. I am getting more emotional with things mm. in in movies. Um, I mean, it is supposed to be something to do with like you know emotional maturity of that. You yeah. know, you're more you're more confident in your own. Yeah, own and that, yeah. When you're a teenager, like it's like super embarrassing. Yeah. You don't want to be like. Oh, I'm well, still I'm still like, like super embarrassed. Like I like a year ago, I wouldn't have been able to admit that I cried at it. So yeah. I, I'm trying hard. Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 <laughs> But, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're actually having feelings now. Yeah, that's that's good. <laughs> it's difficult. It's difficult to know though, because I'm sitting there and going, like, I'm feel, I'm actually feeling uh, like uh, you know more emotions at, um, at at things now. But I don't know if that's actually a good sign of emo of yeah emotional maturity, or if it just means that my own psychological neuroses are just getting worse. 
Okay, so uh, we're going to look at the positive here <laughs> and pretend that that's your emotional maturity. Am I just emotionally and destroyed, or am I, or am I getting better? I'm it's gonna, hard to tell. I'm going to pretend that it's you, you getting increased empathy. Okay, because that makes me more comfortable. <laughs> and everyone listening. And yes. everyone listening because they're like, oh, shit. <laughs> they're like, um, is this another cry for help? Do we need to do something? I, I think our honestly, entire YouTube channel is a fucking cry for help. <laughs> I was going to stop you, but no, that's actually pretty accurate. <laughs> Why are people letting us do this? Someone should stop us. <laughs> no, like I think people, I think the, the the viewers and listeners are just really, really lovely people who are just like, look, these guys have obviously got shit to deal with. Let's just let them do everything and go. You're doing really well. Oh, good, good on you. That was a good podcast. What you've done. <laughs> Just so we get it out of our systems. I think again, I'm an enabler. (laughs) (laughs) You look at you enabling. Yeah, but to be fair, we're enabling you and your HP source addiction. Yeah, it's true. So I think we're kind of enabling enablers. (laughs) But uh, yeah, so um, Logan, fucking amazing. Fucking, I cannot wait to get that on Blu-ray. It is. Oh my god, I love that movie. It's so fucking good. Can recommend if you're an X-Men Mm. fan or just you just like the way like. Like Hugh Jackman, Jackman's nose is because it is a fun nose. You know, <laughs> I definitely reckon. I don't know. I just I always notice people's noses. That... This is something I notice. Well, they are generally in the middle of people's faces. Yeah, I'm like fuck people's eye color. I want to look at their noses. That's the first thing I noticed about you. Well, I do have a fairly prominent nose. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> okay, that's rude. I was I was walking in town with his cousin. And like, and this is before we even knew each other. And you saw my nose hove into view before I. Did. And I was like, "There's a giant flesh-shaped <laughs> protrusion over there." It's like That's a followed by a lot of shaggy hair. How strange! <laughs> it's not that bad. I know. <laughs> it's not, no. So like, no, it was because like you had no. your hair because it was kind of shaggy, and you had like hair over your right eye, and mm. you walked past me, and I looked over, and I saw hair and a nose, and I was yeah. like, "Oh, oh, like a right emo kid." Oh, yeah, you did. That, that works for me. Like, sh- shaggy hair, shaggy, mm. shaggy hair brunettes. I, I can't help it. I have a weakness. <laughs> But and like, now the internet knows. Yep. Fuck. Oh my god. I'm cutting that out. <laughs> <laughs> See, now I can't cut that out. No. I can't cut that out. <laughs> Fuck me, man. Okay. But yeah. So, yeah. Fucking fantastic movie. I, Fan- like, honestly, there were, I don't think there was a mistake in casting at all. It was perfect. Yeah, I do have a secondary theory as well. Everything um, is... In in your head, I don't. I'm trying to think of like because. <laughs> okay, now rather than sit there making weird noises, I could just say it. I mean, fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now it's, this is a, this is like an out of universe thing, because uh, I've not read anything about how the movie got made. Okay. Um, because I kind of avoided all. Maybe stuff to it's do. not even a movie. Maybe it's like. Maybe it's not even a movie. Maybe it's like a peer into Earth 317. I can't remember what Earth our Earth is, and I can't remember what Earth, like, um, like with Roma and, and the whole multiverse thing. I can't remember who's. Yeah, I, can't, I don't know which. No. no there is a. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember what But I'm, I'm talking so, about, like, just... the physical movie, how it got made. Oh, I'm okay, not talking fine. about canonical things. Okay. Well, this isn't as fun. Because <laughs> uh, I've, not, I've not looked up how it, got, how, how it got made, because when before going to see it, I didn't want to get any spoilers yep. or anything. Um. But my kind of theory is that because this movie does not feel like any of the other movies, and honestly is, I have trouble believing that a that Fox signed off on it. <laughs> what? Because it's really fucking good. Well, because it's it's didn't cancel it halfway through it being yeah. made, <laughs> or show you the second half of the film before the first half of the film, <laughs> something yeah. else that Ho- Fox does just do. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I, I kind of have this theory that, you know, obviously Deadpool came out and was pretty much just um, Ryan Reynolds and co. saying saying for years, let us make this movie how we want to make it. It'll be good, honest. Hmm. And eventually they relented. Like, for some reason. they like, took Will up... you leave if we let you make the movie? I can, I can only assume that's what happened. Is that they just annoyed them until they agreed to finance this ridiculous movie. Mm. And then it was, you know, remarkably Oh, popular. yeah, yeah. And it's, it's a very it's, cool movie. It's very funny. And I kind of wonder if Logan got made because of a similar thing of that they of that they went to and went okay now we want to make another Wolverine movie and unlike um, the first Wolverine movie we're going to make it watchable mm-hmm. yeah and I haven't seen the second one so I, I still haven't seen the second one. so I'm not going to throw that one under the bus as well I've heard it's I've heard it's better than X Men Origins but then so is so most is... major dental work so yeah yeah <laughs> I didn't mind that film I quite enjoyed it but that's a whole separate thing was the last time you went to the dentist <laughs> <laughs> just saying <laughs> um. But yeah, so I kind of wonder if if they said, okay, now look, 
Deadpool did really well because you let them have yeah. creative freedom to make something that was going to be different to the other things like this. It wasn't. It's not like the other movies in the X Men universe. Let us do that again, except instead of making like a balls to the wall ridiculous comedy. Can you imagine if Logan was a comedy? <laughs> if it was, oh my god, no. Fox, it'd be, no. It's a, it would be a fucking pitch black comedy if <laughs> yeah. it was. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, but I wonder if it's the same thing, if they went, okay, no, but we want to do this and make it serious and really, you know, make this kind of earnest uh, earnest tale about this character. And I, and, and it's, cause I, can't, I can't help but feel that Deadpool might have some Yeah, I think Deadpool there. is going to have changed quite a few films coming up they're all going to be a bit darker or a bit swearier or a bit yeah. bloodier or a bit because it's basically a bit more highlight. adult because yeah. it's yeah. not even it's not like grim dark it's not like the watchman movie mm. which was like it was you know comedically dark mm. yeah because i mean there are there are a good few dark moments on logan but there's a good few like really sweet and funny moments as well so there's a lovely it's, it's, it's not like the matrix thing where everything's like oh, i don't smile because um it's so uncool and when i'm going to hurt topic like if i smile everyone will think that i'm happy but i'm not an emo <laughs> i mean that's like i'm paraphrasing the script but that's fucking basically what it yeah. was but there's like a really nice part where they're they're sitting around a table and having uh, dinner with a family and most and it turns out that like a large section of that was just ad-libbed and it's so beautiful, and it really do, and it, it does come across because it's so genuine. So it's just them chatting, and yeah, yeah it's, okay. it's, it is so. It oh. gives you so many warm fuzzies. It's just describing, uh, you know, like oh yeah, you know, you know, uh, Charles used to be a used to be a teacher, and it's like oh oh yeah, well he used to run a school. And he's like oh yes, it was like it's like a it, it was a school, it was a special needs school, and you know Logan was one of my students. It wasn't a very good one, cheeky thing, and it's yeah. like oh, it's so so warm and lovely. Yeah. It's wonderful. Oh. But yeah, yeah I need to see this. You point. really do. It's I fuck I wish I, I I'd go see it again now. To, I, I probably wouldn't wear like really dark eye makeup like I did when I went to see it the first time. <laughs> that was a mistake. Because <laughs> I come out like I haven't been crying. Shut up. Fine. I, oh, like oh, also there's no after credit scene. Because okay. like I did yeah. sit there, I was like, I am moving because I I gotta I gotta make sure you know because it's an it's a comic book movie. They yeah. always have them. Yeah. We stand up, turn around. There's the guy, the cleaners, so they're going. Not today. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, you don't know if you don't try. And he's like, mm, yeah, I guess. <laughs> no, he seemed he seemed very much to understand of like, oh well, yeah, yeah, you gotta you gotta make sure. I went, I went to see X Men Two in the cinema, like the first couple of days it came out, and I sat there because I went to see it with with a guy I used to know, um, and like he was too embarrassed to stay with me. He was like, oh no, it's so it's, it's so cringy. Like I'm not staying in here with you. Like you know. So I basically I just sat there and I was like, there's an after credit sequence. And there it was. And I was like, <laughs> fucking yeah. Like, I, didn't like, know that, I didn't know that was there for years. Because people didn't talk about after credit mm. sequences back then. I knew. So, I knew. <laughs> so I know I, I didn't see it until like like after it had been out on DVD for like quite some time. Then I was like, oh shit, yeah, there was a thing on the end of it. Mm. Okay. But yeah, I, like, same thing. I stood up, turned around, put my coat on. The, the janitor was like, oh yeah, you see, you had the right idea. I was like, mate, yeah. What is the one for X-Men 2? I can't fucking remember. Yeah, was it X-Men 3 that had the... X-Men 3 had the... Up? Yeah. I think I can't remember, what, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it was X Men Two. Okay, um, where like yeah, it was just like yeah, no one else has seen this because it wasn't really the norm at that point. Mm. Yeah, so it was just like yeah, Psst. fucking I'm I'm so suave. Look at me with my, my movie knowledge, <laughs> doing so well. So um, so yeah, I, I I'm so I'm just gonna summarize what we have learned in this podcast today. Okay. It's sort okay. of a wrap up. Logan, good movie. You should go watch it. Mm-hmm. Titanfall 2 is okay. It's a video game. Overwatch exists. Mm-hmm. Brown sauce <laughs> should not be allowed near Matt. It should be considered a controlled substance. And Snipe should not be allowed near a D&D campaign. <laughs> I feel that that is an unfair <laughs> generalisation. Not one that you want to go in a direction that anyone's planned. <laughs> or spent hours writing. You didn't say that <laughs> shit, did you? No, no, no. no oh my no. god! No, 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 no. But I know that in future that's going to happen. If you, I try and think of something clever and you'll be like, yeah, I just talked to him and persuade him not to fight me. I was like, but then... You know what's going to happen? That we're gonna, everything up. We're going to see you, like, at the start of, like, a session, put down this, this like, notebook that we can see, like, is full of notes. It's... It's got like all you know the little tags in the top, so you can easily get them. Like we can tell that it's fully written. You're gonna open open it. You're gonna be able to have page one open, and then Snipe's gonna do something, got- and then we're just gonna see you sigh and then close the book. <laughs> just put it onto the floor in the pile of discarded dreams and ideas. 
<laughs> you are literally having a go at me for things I haven't even done yet. You fucking assholes. It's not like I'm gonna. You're gonna be like, and yes, like, like Adolphus the 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 white steps out, lightning crackling behind him, his sur- silver serpentine staff shimmering in the dark light, and he says, "Greetings, Mort," and I, I, I throw something out and go, and I go. Davo and I grew, I crit deception and I convince him that I went to ru- wizard school with him and then he basically gives me his his magical artifacts. I like that's what you guys are thinking. Oh, that's not going to happen. I'm going to die long before that even becomes a thing. No, it's yeah. not. We don't think you're going to succeed. We think you're going to try. <laughs> well, yeah, I got to. And sometimes it up. trying is just as disruptive <laughs> as succeeding. Are you telling me I shouldn't try? And yeah, get the as party I say, joking aside. We don't want to stop you trying. If that's no. how you want to play, it's my job to enable it. It's my character. <laughs> I'm going to act in character. But I the know difficulty that rolls people... might be hard. <laughs> okay, okay, you need to roll 30. If you want to... Get, like, Interesting question, uh, actually, Matt. What do yeah. we have to roll to end this podcast? <laughs> About a two at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Natural 20, let's go.